So, uh, they make you a lot of savory stuff, a lot of things that are uh, not so sweet. However, one thing that my wife absolutely loves is cheesecake and sugar-free. So, uh, I've put together a sugar-free, low-carb slash keto cheesecake. Uh, it's a very simple recipe. It's pretty much no fail. Um, as you saw at the start, there's an entire mise en place set up. I'm gonna tell you right now that if you set things up in mise en place, so weigh out your ingredients, set them in bowls, get all your equipment out, and have everything ready to go, it'll make cooking at home so much faster and so much easier. So first things first, we're gonna start with our almond flour. I'm gonna get that into the bowl. Uh, I use the Costco brand, it's Kirkland. Uh, it's really good, it's super fine. So it tends to make a really nice crust, as you can see. Next thing, we're going to put in our Keto Sweet Plus. Uh, this is a combination of allulose, monk fruit, and stevia. Uh, I will do a little bit of a talk about those kind of sugars and stuff after we finish. Then our cinnamon is gonna go right inside there. And then of course our butter to bring this all together. Uh, if you wanna have a little bit more texture in your crust or you want something that's a little bit like crunchier, you can use uh, sliced almonds and just like crush them up and that'll work just as well. So then we're gonna pull our mixing bowl over lock this guy into place until I bake a lot because this is like a challenge for me right now. And I think that's in. Feels in. Lower that down, lock into place, and then slowly let the mixer, you can also do this by hand if you don't mind getting your hands dirty. I like doing it with machining because it seems to like blend it all really nice and evenly. Uh, We'll turn that off, unlock, and put its kind of stuff off there. Take our paddle down. And so as you can see, it's it's really like a doughy texture. It flattens out really nicely. So we're gonna set that off to the side here for just one second. We'll take a springform pan. If you don't have a springform pan, I highly suggest getting one. So they have these really nice laps on the outside that open up the round and then the bottom goes in and this is the part where I struggle to put together my own spring pan. pan. So <laughs> once you get the bottom in there it's all set. Uh, take a little bit of the residual butter left over from your bowl and we're just going to kind of like wipe that around the inside and that's just going to help things from sticking once we get it in there. Uh, it'll kind of release some of those uh, now it's in. And so once we have a good amount of butter along the inside of the pan, it'll help for none of that stickiness. Now we'll take our almond flour mix and we're literally just going to press this in to the pan. Okay? So We'll push this in. We'll seal up this bottom seal down here. I like it to be about a quarter, about, yeah, about a quarter of an inch thick. So now, as you can see, mine is more of like a, a crust opposed to like a uh, graham cracker crust. So if you're looking for more of a traditional cheesecake, you definitely want to take like sliced almonds, slice them up or use like a, a coarse ground opposed to what I did here with this really fine flour. Cause this is going to be, like I said, it's going to be a lot more like a crust than it is an actual like cheesecake. So we'll take our crust. We'll put it in the oven at 350 degrees for just about 10 minutes until it kind of browns a little bit and get some color on it. While we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and make our filling. This is the fun part. So we take our cream cheese, toss that on in. I like to start the cream cheese off with the allulose. Again, uh, I'm using the 
uh, Keto Sweet Plus from Icon Foods. So we'll put our wire whip in there. Lock it in. I think it's locked in. I hope it's locked in. I'm used to using my, my KitchenAid at, at work, not this one at home. As you can tell, I'm a struggle baker. But I promise this will taste really, really good. And you're probably better baker, bakers than I am. So close her down, lock her in. Then we're gonna let that go. We're gonna whip the cream cheese in there with the allulose until it's like almost a, a really nice base. I let it go at a nice high speed. Make sure everything's combining really well. Once it's whipped for a little bit, get in there and take your rubber spatula and scrape the sides of the bowl and make sure you're getting all of the dry ingredient, uh, the keto sweet mixed in with your cream cheese. Uh, and yes, if you have something other than keto sweet, uh, the allulose and what I'm using, you can definitely use erythritol. Uh, the thing with erythritol is it's actually gonna make it more of a, uh, uh, a little bit denser. It's not gonna be as fluffy. And I'll do a whole separate video on the different sugar alcohols and sugar-free cooking because I think that there's a, enough uh, need for it. So once we get everything kind of like knocked off the sides there, clean up your spatula, drop that back in, lock her into place. Now I'm going to add my sour cream. Sour cream is what gives this a nice like silky smooth texture, as well as a little bit of that, that classic New York style cheesecake flavor. Turn her on. Now, a lot of times, some people will say that you should use a metal attachment to do this. I like to use the wire whip because the wire whip uh, tends to incorporate more air into this, so it makes it lighter, airier, fluffier, fluffier, fluffier. Now, we're gonna add our eggs. I have. Four, I'm sorry, I have two whole eggs and two egg yolks and one ounce of vanilla extract. So we're gonna add those in kind of slowly, let it all incorporate. The important thing here is to make sure that it all incorporates evenly. So once those first two are in there, the next two, and then again, because we are doing this by weight, we wanna make sure we scrape the bowl and get all that goodness in there. Now you can see it actually looks like a nice little batter we have. Turn it up a little bit. Unlock it. We're going to scrape the sides of our bowl. Because again, we don't want to have like chunks of cream cheese in there that are not incorporated into the, the total batter. The whole reason for that is because we want to have a nice, smooth, creamy cheesecake from bottom to top. So, get all that in there. We'll lower it back down, lock it in, and then kick it up to where it's nice and smooth. It's almost like a, a yellowish color. I'm using Vital Farms pastured eggs, uh, and these guys are super, super dark yellow yolks, so it almost makes them a, a really dark colored batter. Now, once we have that all done, we can take it out of the bowl. Then we have our batter. So the consistency on this is pretty thick, as you can see. And, you know, it's almost like uh, a little bit thicker than yogurt consistency. That's pretty much where I like to have it because that's gonna make a nice, dense uh, cheesecake opposed to, you know, a, a really 
uh, light cheesier one. This will have a lot more character and body to it. So now we'll wait for our crust to finish. Once that cools, we'll add our batter and we'll bake it. Okay, so my little experiment did not work out the way that I expected it to. And so as you can see with my crust, it's kind of broken in a few different places around the sides, but that's gonna be okay. So again, the recipe that I'm posting is set up for a coarse ground almond uh, opposed to my super fine. And I will post a product for that as well. So that I'm not just like, Oh, Hey, like, here's some other thing that I'm making up, but cooking is all about practice. And so now I know that that doesn't work. So once that's in, it's cooled down. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our batter right to that. We're going to let that get in to the pan. Uh, I reduced the temperature on the oven down to 275 degrees. You can do this at like 325 uh, with uh, a water bath. I don't have a water bath, uh, a pan large enough to make a water bath uh, for the spring form pan. So I just do it at a lower temperature for a longer amount of time. So this will take uh, just about 43 minutes. And as you can see, I kind of spread this all out uh, along the pan, get all of that good stuff. If you don't own a rubber spatula, get a rubber spatula. But as you can see, we'll kind of like spread that out nice and evenly. The other thing, like instead of just picking the whole thing up and tapping it, you can tap the sides and it does just as much vibration and it'll help settle cake all the way in so there all right so our timer has gone off now we're gonna open it up Ooh, that looks so good we can give it a little jiggle oh yeah that's exactly where we want it to be like we don't want it to be like all over the place but just that little bit of jiggle like right up here in the middle there that's perfect so now we'll pull this out we'll let it rest for about an hour and then we'll cut her open.